Um, I've been getting a lot of questions about the uh, little DIY electrical system project I was working on on this thing. Um, been working on it for a long time. Finally have it completed, more or less. Um, you know, I feel like things are never actually done. But I uh, wanted to just give you a quick overview of what it is, how it all works. Um, I'm going to excuse myself for uh, sounding kind of funny between the, the having a, a rough time breathing and the congestion. I've been fighting this cold for like a week now. This is ridiculous. But anyways, um, this is a starter battery. It's uh, a Group 24. It fits right in the factory tray. No modifications needed. Um, that is a dual purpose deep cycle. It's uh, X2 power, which is North Star rebranded for batteries plus specifically. Um, so that's the, the starter battery. And then we have a second battery over here in the corner. So the way this is all set up, this battery runs everything stock. Everything that's OEM that came with it is powered off of that guy. Everything that's not OEM is powered off of this guy. So the way this is set up, this battery gets charged through a red arc. Um, it's the BCDC 1225D. So it's a 12 volt, 25 amp, um, and the D means it's it's solar ready. I don't have the solar panels at this point, so the solar is not all all hooked up and running. Um, but it's it's built with it. It's capable of it. So. This battery has, from the terminal to a breaker to a low voltage disconnect. So this low voltage disconnect, if this battery gets down below a preset level, it's adjustable for what you want to set it to. But once it gets below a preset level, it'll open that circuit, which will disable the entire fuse box that powers, that gets powered by it. So this cable comes out here, goes around, and that's what powers this guy. So inside here, there's five fuse circuits, there's five relayed circuits. Um, the way I wired it, each circuit has its own connector. Everything's just plug and play. Um, not all of them are utilized. So like that one, for example, is just capped off. But you know, this there's orange, brown, red, there's a purple, there's a, a dark blue, a light blue, uh, white, orange. Um, so those all have their own separate circuits. And then, with the red arc, there is the main power source is this battery. And there's a wire that goes in through the firewall, connects to basically ignition on inside. So anytime the vehicle is running and it sees that this battery is, you know, up to voltage, it's not it's not lower than what it should be, then this guy will act as a smart charger and it starts pumping up to 25 amps into this battery. But it's a smart charger, so it won't overcharge it, just gives it what it needs. Um, with the dual input, with the solar input as well, it'll always prioritize solar over pulling power out of that. Because it's using it as a charger, you're never actually connecting the batteries, so you don't need to worry about having <clears throat> the same type of batteries, the same capacity between the two. Um, I mean, you can run a, a standard lead acid and a lithium, for example, and just you set the charging profile in the red arc, and it programs it, charges it with the voltage it needs to charge. Um, so, on top of being charged off of the red arc, I also have this guy here. That's a, a Noco Genius. It's a smart charger, uh, two amps per bank. There's two, two battery banks. So you have one battery hooked up to battery one, one hooked up to battery two. And then right there's just a standard 110 plug. Um, so you can plug in your, your AC power. If you're at a campground or something like that, plug in your AC power. And I mean, if you're running less than 10 amps, which is a pretty good amount of power, that'll, that'll run everything forever. Um, if you're not going to be at a campground, I mean, you still have the DC-DC charger, so you can always just, you know, kick the, the engine on, let it run for a bit if you get down on battery. Um, 
but you know I plug it in make sure everything's topped off ready to go there's uh, there's two little LEDs in there and you'll see them you know when it's plugged in and both batteries are topped off and it's just on a maintain um, both LEDs will glow green so pretty pretty easy nice convenient um, that's about it for under the hood the uh, that fuse box that powers you know there's a, a light bar right there in the hood which I, uh, I folded that license plate up and bolted it in there to keep it from blocking it um, got the Baja fog lights Baja ditch lights and then up by the uh, the tent here on the rack we got two scene lights on each side um, and oh, real quick I'll open this back window love the smart key on the limited and then right there that's the hookup for the fridge um, I have the fridge sitting in my garage I'm waiting on the slide which is supposed to get delivered tomorrow so then I'll get to work on that but uh, two more on this side and the way the way I wired all of this um, you know there's ditch light wiring you actually don't really see it much but this is the uh, the power and ground wires coming up that just kind of tucks behind and then there's this connector right here which you know there's wiring behind this rail the whole way back that I made sure was kind of hidden out of the way but this right here when we go camping just unplug this and I can turn on these side lights and I have I made a, a little electrical box for in the rooftop tent. Um, that's this guy. That's uh, an eye camper sky camp. Um, thing's awesome. I love it. A, uh, a hard shell four person. Thing's great. Um, anyways, inside of it, I have a red interior light because red doesn't mess with your night vision. And red also does not attract bugs. So there's a red interior light. There's a white interior light. There's a 12 volt power outlet and I can also control these lights from in there so it's the electrical box I basically just plug it in in line with this connector and the power side powers up that whole connector um, that powers up the whole box there's a, a fuse box in the box and from there you know it comes back out plugs into the other side so that's how you get power over that side over the the lights on the side um and then there's another connector going to the interior lights for the tent so it's a nice little setup really happy with it no complaints worked out great so far um yeah that's about it that's our little camping setup that we got going on that's all our electrical uh if you got any other questions let me know i'd be happy to try to explain something or give you more info um yeah, I don't have like a, a super detailed list of parts, but I do have a wiring diagram because of how complex all of this was. Um, I made sure to make a diagram, plan it all out the first time, rather than going back and doing and redoing and all that good stuff. I forgot to show you guys the switch panel that I made. Um, this is a pre-facelift, obviously, which normally it comes with this stupid fold down cover and that kind of blocks some of this bottom so I got a replacement of the newer version and uh, cut it all out put in the all these switches so there's you know the fog lights ditch lights light bar in the grill left side lights right side lights and then there's two USB chargers um, the higher amperage not the little 1.2s and those are all hardwired. They run all the time. Um, the power from that also ties into the dash cam up there. There's the uh, the second one. And uh, yeah, that's about it. Um, the other thing I guess worth mentioning the uh, the ArcLight LEDs. These things are awesome. 
but all the interior ones have the same, you know, red and white functionality. Same reason I did it in the tent. Um, light when you want it, keep the bugs away when you don't want them, and uh, works out pretty well. It's awesome. My three-year-old thinks it's great to turn them to red all the time. <laughs> but anyways, I'm out on this, this trail. Thought I'd give a quick little overview because I get asked quite a bit. Um, it's not a difficult project, all the wiring and everything. It's, uh, it's actually fairly easy. It's just a lot of planning. It's very tedious. Um, you know, you got to have patience if you're if you're going to have it come out all nice and clean. There's a lot of patience, a lot of little parts you got to buy, terminals and, you know, making sure you have marine grade heat shrink and all that. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's nice to do it on your own. Make something for yourself rather than just buy it. Um, I like the way I have it set up because everything is plug and play. If I have a problem with a circuit, just disconnect that circuit, diagnose it. Everything's on breakers, so it's not popping fuses. Um, you know, if you need to work on something, just flip the breaker quick. You're you're ready to go. Kills power to everything. Um, it's a nice setup. It's convenient. I'm a fan. But uh, yeah. All right. Take care, guys.